Oh, yo, what's up, Pete? I'm getting ready to grab a tasty beverage. You want something? Okay, well, what do you want, man? Well, that depends. What do you have in mind? Excellent choice. Ah. Yo, what is going on? Welcome back to today's video. Welcome back to the movie room. My name is Justin and we have a super fun, super chill video today. These are my favorite type of videos to make. It's a, my favorite type of videos to watch. Just chill hangout videos. Hang out, we're just gonna hang out and chill. I made some popcorn, I got some Surge. For you kids who don't know, Surge was a discontinued soda for you 90s kids, you remember, and they no longer made it. And there was a big push to bring it back called uh, uh, the Surge Movement. Through signatures and social media, they brought back Surge. So that's why I'm drinking Surge. I'm a big 90s. Any, I'm a sucker for nostalgia. They get me every time. So today, we're just going to chill. Maybe you're just getting off work. You just want so, You just want to turn your brain off watch a watch a nice long video of me talking about a bunch of release dates that's what we're gonna do so i'm gonna go over a bunch of stuff that's coming out all the way from july 21st uh to what is today i think today's the 21st um i think so yesterday all the way until october and i'll run down some of the special features i'll put the cover art in little pop-up windows and you'll be able to check out the cover art so yeah it's gonna be a fun one I'll try not to eat on camera. I'll edit that part out. But I was starving. I haven't eaten yet. So, I look forward to hanging out with you guys. Definitely let me know in the comments. If I, I didn't get... Obviously, there's a lot of things that I may not be covering. These are just the, the titles that really jumped out for me. That really sparked my interest. Thankfully, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out right now. So, it's really cool to see all these releases coming out. Especially a lot of 4K stuff. Uh, so, we got... Criterion, Screen Factory, and then some catalog titles, some Warner Archive, uh, a bunch of really cool stuff. So, uh, cheers, guys. Now, to start off, uh, these are all released July 21st. First of which being, I actually want, I wanted to touch on something that I, I checked last new release video and I couldn't find, it was unavailable on Amazon when I checked it out, but it is back. This is a deep cut. I'm assuming anybody that's watching a 20 something minute video of me talking about Blu-ray releases is down for genre films. There's a movie called Tokyo Gore Police. It is one of the coolest movies I've ever seen. It is right on par as far as gore with anything like Peter Jackson's Dead Alive or Brain Dead. Any of those like ultra like gore core movies. Ricky O comes to mind. Uh, you have to check out Tokyo Gore Police. It just got another release that was a little cheaper than the other one. Uh, the other one was for some reason a little bit more expensive. I'm gonna put up some clips. Uh, maybe it's already playing now, but this movie is amazing. It is the most ridiculous, cartoonish, gore-filled movie I've seen in so long. And it finally got another Blu-ray release. Um, people fused with machines. It's basically just a show, an hour and a half showcase of practical 
um, ridiculous practical effects and it is so cool. So that came out, I think on the 14th. So check that out. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I love that movie. Okay, so July 21st, first off, You Don't Know Me, the Showgirls documentary. They made a feature length documentary showcasing the history, the fandom, and everything Showgirls. Uh, Paul Verhoeven, of course, directed a bunch of stuff in the 80s and 90s, uh, RoboCop and Total Recall and a bunch of really cool stuff. But after that, in the 90s, he, he released a movie called Showgirls about um, Jesse from Saved by the Bell moving to Las Vegas and becoming a Showgirls glor you know, stripper on the strip. And it is one of the most spectacularly bad movies up there with The Room, Veronica, any type of Troll 2. If you haven't seen Showgirls, watch that first and then check out You Don't Know Me because uh, the documentary is really cool. Next up, we have two FYE exclusive steelbooks. Now, uh, the special features, I believe, are just ported over from other releases. I, don't, I think the only thing special about these is the, um, the new cover art and the fact that it's a steelbook. Uh, and they are exclusive to FYE, released July 21st. We got Better Off Dead and Tommy Boy. So if you're interested in checking out those, um, that's cool. I actually don't, for some reason, I just don't own Tommy Boy. One of those movies that you've seen so many times that I guess I just didn't, I didn't, I never thought about picking it up, but I may get that steelbook. Uh, next, uh, Clueless. I talked about this a little bit in the last, my, my last uh, Blu-ray update video. It's cool. There's a new release of Clueless. Uh, John Wick 1 through 3 4K Steelbook. I don't, I think that's a Best Buy exclusive, but I'm not 100% sure. You might want to correct me on that. I don't think I'll have to ask you guys to correct me on that. Um, but yeah, here's the artwork for that. Uh, if you don't own all the movies already, I already bought, I bought the first and second one separately and then the third one separately too. So I don't need to pick this up. They always do that, man. It's almost like you have to wait and just hold off until you see. They, they, they get us collectors by thinking we have to have everything before it goes out of print or something. So of course, John Wick 1 and 2, I had to have the steel boats. And then, uh, you know, then they released this. But the artwork is cool. Next up, Capone with Tom Hardy artwork right here. This movie is another really bonkers, insane, I wouldn't even call it a biopic because it doesn't really even dive into um, his life as a, as a criminal or as a mobster. It takes place in the last few months of his life, few months, few years of his life, when his body has completely given out on him. He's basically bedridden. He's like a big giant baby. At one point, he, he can't, they, he's not allowed to smoke cigars anymore and they give him a carrot. And he's just, I'll put that picture right here. He's just sucking on a carrot. And it's its just so ridiculous. I forget the director's name, but he's actually done some cool stuff. But uh, I think he did Chronicle, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, Capone, check that. It's such a strange movie. A lot of weird dream sequences. And uh, it's, just a, it's just a really interesting look. It's one of those movies you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it, but uh, Capone. Next up, Warner Archive. Now, Warner Archive has been putting out a bunch of really cool catalog titles. I think they put out Bad Ronald. I think they're the ones that put out Bad Ronald, which was a really cool TV movie, uh, kind of a horror uh, TV movie. They put out uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. They put out a bunch of really cool titles, and this is really cool. They're putting out a four pack with Innocent Blood, uh, Wolfen, Body Snatchers, and The Hunger which is a really kind of, it's an interesting pack because the, all four movies are kind of really kind of an alternate or different take on monster and creature movies. Uh, it's just really cool. Body Snatchers, of course, is the third version of, uh, you know, they had Invasion of the Body Snatchers and then uh, another one. And then this one came out in 93, but Body Snatchers is probably my favorite out of uh, the four that are in this pack. Um, it's just a really cool, um, I'd kind of, a good double feature would be to pair Body Snatchers with The Blob because they're kind of a throwback of old school monster movies, but done in the 80s and 90s. So they added, you know, gore effects and of course tried to make it a little grosser and a little more shocking as a compared to the tame original versions that came out before. 
Innocent Blood, a really cool vampire movie, Wolfen, which is an extremely underrated werewolf movie. If you're into werewolf movies at all, American Werewolf in Paris, um, any of those classic werewolf movies, uh, definitely check out Wolfen and uh, The Hunger. Definitely check out that four pack. It's a really cool four pack. Put the artwork right here. Uh, also, July 14th, I guess this came out last week, but I wanted to mention it. Criterion released Bruce Lee's Greatest Hits, um, which is a collection of some of his movies. I just wanted to quickly mention that. I haven't seen um, some of the movies that are in there, so I actually want to pick that up. But uh, it's a really cool set uh, from Criterion. Also, uh, July 21st, Marriage Story from Noah Brom Bombeck. Um, this movie was really really incredible um if you're into kind of i mean it's a very depressing movie but the way bombak writes character and drama and relationships and the way he directs it it's done in such a real way that it kind of just guts you with every line that these characters speak in some of these scenes it's just marriage story if you haven't seen it is uh, a really just kind of brutal portrayal on a couple played by um, Adam Driver and uh, Scarlett Johansson in the midst of a divorce. And it's he kind of goes back and forth a little bit, showing you their happiest times to current times when they're in a legal battle in their divorce. And I don't want to give away too much, but it's just a really heartbreaking movie. But the acting is just so incredible. It's just, it's it's all, it's so good. He I don't know what how Bombat gets these performances out of these actors, but he just does a fantastic job with these uh, dramas. I can't remember the name of the one he did with uh, Ben Stiller, When We Were Young, or We Were Young, another great movie. Uh, definitely check that out. So we have new, this is a 4K digital transfer supervised by Bombac with the 5.1 surround, uh, surround sound DTS master. Um, and uh, let's see, new interviews. Um, the Players, a new program featuring interviews with actors Scarlett Johansson, Adam Driver, Laura Dern, uh, Alan Alda, Julie Haggerty, and Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta is really good in this movie too. Uh, Laura Dern plays uh, Scarlett Johansson's lawyer and Ray Liotta plays his lawyer, um, Adam Driver's lawyer. The Making of Marriage Story, new interviews uh, with, Ra uh, with composer Randy Newman. Uh, gotta love Randy. A new program featuring Bombac walking the viewer through key location from the film. So some cool special features, and it, again, it's these companies doing 4K transfers, but not releasing a 4K disc, which is a little strange. It's just another one of those things with the collectors. Like at one point, Criterion was the pinnacle of a movie's release. There was absolutely nothing better that was going to be released for a certain movie. If it got a Criterion, it was done. And now with 4K, it's like, do you want the 4K transfer or you just want the Blu-ray? Um, with newer movies, uh, it doesn't tend to matter as much as really cleaning up the older movies and as regarding 4K, but uh, Criterion still puts out some amazing stuff. So next up, July 28th, uh, Apocalypto. Mel Gibson's Apocalypto, an incredible, incredible movie. The movie opens up where you have a young tribe and they've just got a kill and they're you know, eating the liver and all this gnarly stuff, and they're, you know, walking back to their camp with their kill. They encounter another rival tribe. They tell them to basically fuck off, stay away from our area, um, cut back to the uh, the original tribe, and they're all happy. And then this other rival tribe comes in and just completely devastates their village. And it's really heartbreaking, but then the story continues from there. Uh, made some popcorn. Okay, I am back. Next up, still uh, July 28th, we have 13 Ghosts. Um, with, if I'm sure you guys are familiar with uh, 13 Ghosts. This is going to be coming out from Scream Factory. Uh, new audio con commentary. New interview with actress uh, Shannon Elizabeth. The Voice of Reason, an interview with actor Matthew Harrison. Uh, new interviews with uh, producer Gilbert Adler. Um, actor John DeSantis and actor Herbin, uh, Herbert Duncanson. So some some new special features. Uh, let's see, Ghost Files, a haunted house full of poltergeist profiles. Um, 
uh, the original electronic press kit featuring interviews with the cast and crew. That should be pretty cool. The, the original press kit. 13 Ghosts is one of those really good movies. Um, people, I think people tend to blow it up and act like it's a little bit better than it is. It's it's okay. It's fine. I'm not, I don't hate the movie. It's, it's fine. But uh, um, it's kind of like House on Haunted Hill, where back in the day when it was released, it was like the coolest movie of all time with... You know, coming out in the 90s, and then you watch it again, it's like, yeah, it's okay. I can do it. It's a good movie. Moving on to August 4th, Swallow from uh, Shout Factory. Swallow, if you haven't seen it, um, first of all, it's beautifully shot. Every, every shot is like a work of art. It's perfectly framed. The camera movement is amazing, but the movie opens up on this young woman. Uh, she appears to be kind of just one of the just the classic for the movie just a housewife that makes the home makes dinner keeps everything nice while her husband comes home and eats the food and couldn't you know doesn't show a whole lot of interest to her um and the movie really focuses on her struggles with happiness and she eventually develops um, a disorder called pica where she ingests items that aren't supposed to be ingested. So I wouldn't really call this a horror movie, but at times it is really disturbing. Um, she starts out small by eating things like marbles and thimbles and, and stuff like that. And then she moves on to thumbtacks and screws and nails, and they get progressively worse as she swallows these objects. And um, I'm not gonna spoil the end, but uh, a really disturbing movie, but also it, heartbreaking and really beautiful um the forgive me for not for remembering her name but the the young actress that plays the lead character was absolutely incredible i think she was the girl that played in the, uh the haunting of molly hartley which is a terrible movie but she's very good in this movie swallow from shout factory um august 25th this is one of my most anticipated movies of this whole list, Tales from the Dark Side Collector's Edition. Um, this was an anthology from the early 90s. Um, uh, we have several different stories interwoven. Uh, and uh, it's kind of like, you know, uh, you know, in the spirit of like Tales from the uh, Tales from the Crypt or something like that, where you, you have a connecting story and then individual stories in the movie. One that always sticks out of my mind, I think for a lot of people, was the mummy story with Steve Buscemi, where the guy gets his brain pulled out through his nose. It's such a fun movie. Uh, Christian Slater's in it. It's a really, I, yes, I like Christian Slater. Really cool movie, and that'll be coming out August 25th. New audio commentary, new tales, uh, new tales behind the dark side, the making of four ghoulish fables, um, a six chapter feature length documentary featuring director John Harrison, producer Mitchell Gallen, director of photography, uh, um, special makeup and creature effects artist Robert Kurtzman, Greg Nicotero, and Howard Berger. A um, bunch of really cool special features. Another audio commentary with director and screenwriter George A. Romero. Trailer, TV spots, radio stop spots, uh, stills gallery. Um, yeah, so Tales from the Dark Side, August 25th. That brings us to September 29th which will see the release of Scream Factory's uh, Ghost Ship. Um, pretty much, I guess you can consider it a classic. I think the movie is more famous or infamous for its opening scene rather than the rest of the movie. For me, that movie is a little bit of a miss once that really cool opening scene happens, but that's just me. Uh, September 29th, extras are still in progress. Um, it looks like uh, it will come, the collector's edition, if you're not, if you haven't bought a lot from Scream Factory, the collector's edition will come with a poster and or lithograph and a slip cover. Um, so the extra, this is a collector series edition and the extras are still in progress. Um, all right. Also September 29th, will bring the release of Criterion Collections, Elephant Man, new 4K digital restoration with the uncompressed stereo soundtrack on the Blu-ray, um, directed by David Lynch. Uh, now this is a kind of a fever dream of a movie. Um, Anthony Hopkins, of course, stars as the Elephant Man. Um, based I, somewhat on a true story. Um, you'll have to dig into that story and to the background of the actual story, but it's very Lynchian. Um, it's a very, uh, I wouldn't say disturbing movie, but it's a very unsettling movie. 
Um, but uh, I highly recommend it if you're maybe a fan of uh, David Lynch's, maybe you've seen Twin Peaks or Mulholland Drive or Lost Highway or anything like that, but haven't dug into Elephant Man. So new 4K digital restoration. We have archival interviews with John Hurt and producer. Mel Brooks produced the produced Elephant Man, which is pretty interesting. He actually, look into his, Mel Brooks's production, producing credits, he actually produced some pretty interesting things. Uh, Audio recording from an 8, 1981 of an interview with uh, David Lynch at the American Film Institute. Uh, the Terrible Elephant Man revealed a 2001 documentary about the film. Um, and then we have trailer and radio spots and uh, more. Uh, plus a booklet featuring excerpts from an excerpts from an in interview with Lynch from the 2005 edition of Filmmaker. Um, and writer Chris Rodley's book, Lynch on Lynch. So that's pretty cool. Um, that brings us to October 13th. October 13th, we'll see the release of Motel Hell. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, I want to grab another movie for a thing. So October 13th, we'll see the release of Motel Hell Steelbook. Now, um, I have the original release right here, and as I was looking through the special features, it appears that it's basically the same special features that we saw um, on this release ported over, but there is a new 4K transfer. At this time, there is the litho and poster are still available, as well as the slipcover. Um, so that's another thing where they're releasing a 4K scan um, to a movie that's already been released, but it's not a 4K Blu-ray. So... I just don't know what to think about these second editions. So we have this one, and now they're releasing another Blu-ray in a steelbook with the 4K transfer, but it's not a 4K movie. Are they gonna release a 4K version down the line? Like, I just don't know how I feel about these re-releases. I don't, you know, but if you're into it, the artwork is really cool. Um, also on October 13th, the Horror documentary, Terror in the Isles. Uh, extras are still in progress. Um, this was actually on, this documentary appeared on the special features of another movie's Blu-ray. I can't, if you, if you are still watching at this point and you remember, um, let me know what uh, movie that was. Terror in the Isles was on special features of another movie. All right, and that brings us to Parasite, which will be released on October 27th. Now, this is the... Criterion Collection's release of Parasite. If you haven't seen Parasite, I mean, it's been the most talked about movie, one of the most talked about movies um, of the past year or two. It's an amazing film. I highly recommend you check it out. Um, it actually just got a 4K release not too long ago, but Criterion will be releasing um, a 4K digital master approved by director Bong Joon-ho. So this isn't a 4K, but it's a 4K master released on uh, Blu-ray, uh, Dolby Atmos soundtrack. Um, so um, it's a really cool, it is a really cool addition. The uh, artwork comes from the original uh, poster artwork that was released with the movie. Um, we have a new audio commentary from uh, Bong Joon-ho and critic Tony Raines. Um, black and white version of the film with a new introduction by Bong. Now the black and white version, if you want to check that out, look at the trailer. It really does give it a really different feel. Uh, so yeah, there's a black and that's what it says on this. Um, if I'm reading this correct, correct. It says on this version will be a black and white version of the film with a new introduction by Bong and Dolby Atmos soundtrack. So that is really, really cool. Um, the, sometimes if with the right movie, the black and white can really look cool. I know the chrome version of um, the uh, Mad Max was awesome. So, um, yeah. And then moving on, we have new conversation between Bong and critic Darcy Paquette. New interviews with uh, production designer. Um, new program about the Korean cinema movement. Cannes Film, Cannes Film Fest uh, press conference. Masterclass special uh, featuring Bong from the 2019 Lumiere Festival in France and storyboard comparisons. Um, and that, okay, and then August 11th, that brings us, this is the last one, and this is just kind of for fun um, if you're interested. 
Um, are you afraid of the dark? In 2019, there was a three-part limited uh, series, um, Are You Afraid of the Dark, which brought in new characters. It was kind of a, I wouldn't call it a reboot. It was just kind of a one-off thing. I don't know if they're going to do it again. But it was actually a really fun little three-part series. I was on, I bought it on, on demand. It was like five bucks for all three episodes. Um, it's If you're not familiar with Are You Afraid of the Dark, it was a... Um, a young adult show on Nickelodeon it used to be there used to be a thing called Snick on Nickelodeon where they'd play um, fun stuff on uh, Friday nights uh, for kids. And Are You Afraid of the Dark was a horror show, basically an introduction to horror for kids my age, and I loved it. And Are You Afraid of the Dark would bring these kids around a campfire and they tell each other ghost stories, and each of those ghost stories would be an episode. So, um, but basically with this one, you have a girl joining the Midnight Society. She kind of sees these kids, and uh, she. Is invited to join the thing and she tells her story and her story starts to become a reality so it's not like an anthology like where each episode is a different story um, it's, it's a story a three three part uh, three episode story arc um, and also included in that is three classic episodes of the original show that will be included on that that's on Amazon for like 10 or 11 bucks so um, the three-part self-contained limited series is about the newest member of the Midnight Society, her first scary tale, and what happens to the group when the terrifying events of her story start to actually happen in their small town. So, yeah, super cool. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it's safe enough that I say I would think you could show it to your kids. If uh, I always love, I still love all the starter horror movies. Um, you know, The Witches, The Gate. The Peanut Butter Solution, um, uh, Legend, all those kind of dark fantasy, Little Monsters, all the movies that I watched as a kid that were just be, just under the threshold of being too scary for a kid, but can still kind of scare the shit out of you a little bit. They're just so much fun, and Are You Afraid of the Dark was one of those shows. So, but uh, that is all I got, guys. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. These are my favorite videos to make where I just kind of sit and talk at the camera. Hopefully you were able to, I don't know, grab yourself uh, some food and a beverage and just kind of hang out with me for a little while. I'm gonna try to, I'm just being real disrespectful right now. But uh, I love doing these type of videos. Definitely give me a like and a, and a sub if this is your first time here. Uh, check out my last video where I uh, reacted to Megan Fox's new movie, Rogue, her killer lion movie. So check that out. Um, and yeah, go back through my videos and give me some views, man. I'm a brand new channel. I've only been around for a few weeks. So my name's Justin and, and, uh, coming up crime. See ya. Bye. I love movies. Gosh, I love movies. I love watching them and I love making them.